youth, a lot of black black folks as well. I definitely pinpoint the black folks. We like to buy the flashiest things, buy the nicest cars and and um you know, jewelry and just going out, splashing money on drinks and all of that. Um not too sure how it is now in the academy, but I know definitely back then in my time a lot of the like my the same colour as us, I think we was definitely doing a bit too much. Um and wasn't being too sensible with our money. So I think, yeah, distraction-wise, that definitely caused a lot of distraction. Back again with another episode. I'm your host, Jordan Antonio Brown, and today we have with me a special guest on uh, career after football. Another episode of that. Uh, this is someone I've known for many years. Um, you know, looked up to him. Used to play with his brother. Uh, we were the same age, same year group at Arsenal, and his brother was older, doing his thing. Um, also, at the time. The youngest ever player to play for South End United. I don't, I don't know if you still have that record or not. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> still, still, have still got it. Still got the record. Um, today I have with me Femi Orinuga, also known as DJ Femstar. How you doing, bro? Thanks, bro. Thanks for the intro. I'm good, man. Yourself? Yeah, all good, man. All good. Yeah, man. Haven't spoken to you in a while, so just going to chop it up. Um, just talk to me. I was coming, I was, I was on Instagram, scrolling as you do, and I see Femi. Femi's the DJ. I was like, bro, I swear that's sick. Obviously, um, now, you know, lockdown, it must be kind of hard as, uh, you know, they are probably missing out on a lot of gigs, but just uh, take me through, like, your passion for DJing and how it started. Yeah, so <clears throat> I've always had a uh, passion for music. I've always loved music. Obviously, um, that we have so many siblings, seven of us, so I've got six. I'm the second youngest, so I've grown up listening to their music, you know, when I was young, and just always enjoyed it. We enjoyed different genres, different artists from reggae to garage to Afro beef, R and B, old school R and B, all of that. Um so even when I was playing professionally, I was still, you know, listening to and and paying attention to to music. Um so yeah, that's that's how it kind of like that's that's, that's how it grew. That's how it started. Um, for for the people who don't know, uh, what what kind of what kind of training do you have to have for that? Training, oh man! So I was self-taught. I, I literally, I, I, I've learnt myself. Um, I started off with my phone, so I had a mobile phone. I used to literally, um, I downloaded an app called DJ Pro um, on my phone, and I just started um, like putting music on my phone. But I wasn't really DJing like that. I was just, I liked to increase the tempo of, of certain songs you know, like speed up a little bit. So that's what I was doing, literally just speeding up some, some of my songs that I had on my phone. And then um, one day I was just bored and I actually wanted to learn how to like DJ. So I was just doing it. I was doing it through that app and I became good at it. Um, I remember I was always like asking people, oh, let me DJ, let me DJ. And like, DJ? A footballer? How do you want to DJ in my party? Like, not a a massive party, like one of them house parties or something, whenever I got um, invited to. Um, and then, yeah, that's how it kind of started through my phone. Got myself a laptop, the decks, speakers, all of that, and just started literally practicing properly. Um, and then just became like good at it, I properly mastered it. Whoa. Two questions on that. What is easier, uh, training? Because as I said before, you know, there's different ways to introduce yourself into uh, DJing. But 
Um, you know, with football, there's pretty much one way where you go outside, you go practice, practice, practice. Is that the same with DJ? You just yeah, I think so. I think everything, everything you do, whether it's DJing, football, teaching, you've got to practice. You know, if you definitely, if you want to be at a certain level as well, um, I think practicing is key in whatever industry that you're in. But um, what was the question? What's easier? Yeah, yeah, like what's easier to practice for? Like, what what can you like? Is football easier to master compared to? DJ and what's more easier to okay. practice for, you know? Yeah, good questions. I think it's just two different techniques. So, um, like football, as you know, it's more labour and it's more <clears throat> um, work ethic. Um, and DJing is more technical, you know. But um, mentally, if you want to look at the mental aspects, like as a, as a DJ, you've got to be able to hold a crowd. You know, and at times you you got a stubborn crowd, um, and it's like pressure on you to, to to either get them dancing or to keep them dancing. Do you know what I mean? Football is different. Football is more of a team game. Of course, you got to put in your hundred percent in um, on the pitch, but at the same time, you can a teammate can bail you out. Not in DJing, <laughs> it's so much pressure in. Indigen, so yeah, yes. um, it, it, they both have their pros and cons, I suppose. But I'll say, pressure wise, pressure wise, I'll say DJing, I'll say DJing, there's more pressure in DJing than football because football is just like I was born and bred to do football that like, I, I can handle pressure in football. Yeah, that's, I mean? that's, that's, that's the question I was going to ask. ask. The, the question I was going to ask next was going to be uh, thousands of you know fans. You know, maybe giving you abuse, maybe cheering you on in football, or thousands of people in the party, hundreds of people in the party, and you know, you like you said, you gotta hold the crowd. What's what's you said mm. more pressure, DJing? Yeah, yeah, I think DJing obviously it's more intimate. The crowd is more intimate because there's less of people, um, and it's like they're so close to you. It's more intimate when you're playing in front of thousands of of of, of people. It, it's not as I know it might sound a bit weird, but it's not as um as pressuring. Yeah, there's so many people, but at the same time, you can't even see their faces. When you're DJing, you can see everyone's faces, you know? So, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. I think probably more pressuring um, DJing than, than playing football. Uh, on the, touching on the last point I wanted to make, it's probably quite similar as in football, you know, you can have a great game, Everything's going well for you. You make one mistake, now everyone's on your back in terms of mm. like the crowd. DJing, mm. I, I don't know, you you know better than I do, but it's probably similar, you know. You can have a good night, everything's going well, and then maybe just <laughs> slip up on a couple couple rhythms and that and then you know <laughs> the crowd the crowd is going a different way. I don't know how it is. Hundred, hundred percent. Um yeah, you can literally, it's like, you know the saying, um, you can do it in a football pitch, you can do, you can play crap for the, for 89 minutes, but that last minute, you can come to life. It's, it's similar to, to a DJ, it's similar, but at the same time, you can, I can play good rhythms from, let's say my set is from like 3 p.m. to 10 p.m., all right? I can play so well from 3 p.m. to 9 and that last hour it was bad you know, like people remember me for that last hour and then the from 3 to 9 you know so it's important to obviously finish off really really good yeah man that's sick stuff man and you know i commend you for what you're doing uh any parties when the lockdown's finished shout me you know <laughs> I, I, roll, I roll through but um, no yeah we'll, we'll, we'll come full, full circle later and, and I'll ask you a few more questions on that I just want to go back to your upbringing so I know your uh, I know your dad I know your brother um, Nigerian household your dad funny guy strict <laughs> as well um, that's how, how did that have an impact um, 
on you coming up and you know choosing to play football massive impact massive and you don't realize until like you get older how much um your parents means to uh, uh, someone or the 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 child so my dad would take me not just me that my, my other brothers to football training and back like even like school matches he would come to watch and i didn't really not appreciate i've definitely appreciate but i didn't really understand when people would say oh your dad's your dad your dad is it's one of a kind, your dad, it's good that what your dad is doing. Like a lot of the time, a lot of people would tell me about um, what my dad is doing. And I'm just thinking, isn't that normal? But like I said, as you get older, you start to realise, well, actually not many of these kids have a dad or even a mum that are so supportive, you know? Um, so I, be, I honestly believe I wouldn't probably be out or I wouldn't achieve the amount of stuff I achieved in football, if it wasn't for my dad, just to support the um, taking me, taking me constantly training, and I'm, when I'm training, I'm about like south in every se- every single week. It's not it's not close, you know what I mean? It's it's far. So yeah, just all the commuting and and all of that was a lot. It was a lot, so yeah, definitely. I think that support from my, my dad specifically was something that kind of gave me that that head start and gave me that kind of boost to being what I what I what I was, and even like the man that I am today, it's being the man that I am today. What what um, inspired you to get into football? Uh, was it you know the fact that you had older brothers or? Um, and also, what was the process in signing for Southend? So football, what inspired me, inspired me, inspired me. Sorry, um, I was see my brother definitely. So not keep, not keep, not my younger brother. My <laughs> one of my older ones. Um, he's two years older than me. I remember going to watch him play, um, play a match for his primary school. Went to the same primary school, and. Um, yeah, every Saturday they will play uh, a tournament, primary school. Uh, until one day I went to watch and they didn't have enough players. So their manager asked if I wanted to play. They had the kit and all that there already. Um, but I never had football boots. Luckily enough, the manager had a spare one, uh, my size as well. So I played. Um, that's actually the first time I played like grassroots football. And... Um, I thought, yeah, I'm, I'm quite good. And that was two years up. I was playing two years up at the time. So, um, yeah, I enjoyed it. Uh, that was probably the, the first and the last game I played with them. Years later, I was playing, obviously, my age group, and I was like, I cut above the rest. So that's how I kind of started the football thing. Um, Grassroots, that is. Uh, what was the second question? Southend. Yeah, so then how, how did you get signed for... South End, what was the process? So I was at a team called Cray Wonderers, um, just doing so well there. Uh, got scouted by a Chelsea scout at the time. Yeah, I think he might he might still be there. Um, a man called Steve Owen, who had connections with, with Chelsea. Mm-hmm. Uh, went Chelsea for a bit uh, on trial, that was. Um, obviously didn't get in. Then a man called Paul Senior took me to West Ham. I was there for a long, long time. Um, he has a wife called Lara, who's an agent. Um, West Ham didn't sign me. They didn't sign me. So she then took me to South End. Um, got signed my first match. And then, yeah, the rest was history. Oh, that's... At the time, did you did you kind of thrive off the fact that you know you got that first little bit of rejection, and how did you react to it? So, I think the the West Ham rejection was more tougher to take than the the Chelsea one. The Chelsea one, if I'm honest with you, I don't think I was ready. I was like twelve at the time, and like the step up from grassroots to 
that academy football was like major and to be fair it kind of opened my eyes as well because it made me realize okay cool there's some things that i need to work on and there's some you know just some yeah some things that i need to work on so which i did went back to my grassroots football team um and continued being the best continue uh, improving and then west ham like i said i was there for like two three months um and verbally they said they were going to sign me so when I found out that I wasn't getting signed, it was almost like kicking the teeth. But literally, like a week later, or even like a few days later, um, uh, the agent took me to South End. And after the first game, um, they signed me. So that was almost like a relief. Yeah, how, how was that first game? What were you doing? Do you remember it? Yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember it was against Brentford. Brentford it was. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> It was good. And funny enough, one of the players that was there, he was at West Ham with me at the time. And um, that was his first game as well. So I got signed. So that West Ham player was, he was signed to West Ham. And then he got released, obviously, then went on trial for something. So me and him was on trial at the same time. Um, and literally I signed the day, well, well, that game. And he signed maybe like six weeks after. Um, but yeah, now I was doing so well in that game. Um, scored a couple goals, and yeah, it's the manager, manager, just loves me and loved yeah. me at the time. So in your head, what what are you thinking? You know, you've gone through this process, gone through grassroots. You sound like you started football a bit later than everyone else, and now you know you got your breakthrough. And is it like for you just thinking? Is it is it thinking or is it just doing what you do type of thing, you know what I mean? In terms of? You know, when you're that age, sometimes you'll overthink too much, you know? And okay, no, I, I wouldn't say I was just overthinking. That like, I'm used to being, that like, I, I was used to being the best in my team. So even when I got signed for South End, it's, people, it's easy for people to just literally be complacent and be the fourth best or the fifth best. But I've always wanted to be the best and I'm very competitive, so when I get told or when I'm hearing, oh yeah, I say Femi is like probably the third best. When I hear something like that, I'm like, nah, I've got to be number one. So when I got signed for South End, I was still um, shining. Every game I was shining, score, two, three, whatever. At what age was this? My name was um, under 13s, under 14s, under 14s. Wow, it's quite late, yeah. Yeah, yeah, under 14s. So. <laughs> On the fourteenth level, um, I was just shining. Literally, uh, I'll play a year up sometimes, um, even two years, two years up at times. I was literally just no one could stop me. I was just shining. Um, so yeah, that was kind of my mentality. Yeah, yeah. So pff, crazy story that I didn't even know that you got into football that late um, in terms of academy football or centre of excellence. And a couple of years later, take me through the process of that whole experience where, you know, <clears throat> now you're getting called up to play with men. And, um, you know, tell me about some of the age groups you skipped, you know, to make that, to make that step up. Um, so when I was, I think, under 15, under 16, under 16, or 15 years at that time, I got scouted by, so when I got South in, there was a Man United scout that was watching my games. Um, Cause like I said, I was making a lot of noise. Um, so I went to United just to train, just to train. Um, I was there for like a week or two, played a couple games, uh, came back to South in. Didn't really think nothing of it. I just thought, you know, let me go to United and just see um, how it go. Because I'm a United supporter as well. I went there now. Um, played well. Scored in one game against Villa. And played against Everton in the other game. Came back to South End. Um, the sports director, academy sports director, called me and my dad in for, for a meeting. 
and they said um, United and Everton have offered me a contract. Um, so it was, I wouldn't say it was a shock, but it was more of a shock that Everton offered me a contract because <laughs> we had nothing to do with them. We just played against them. Um, but United, I knew I did well, so I'll be, I would have been surprised if they didn't offer me anything. Uh, so yeah, at the end of the day, I chose um, I chose Everton. I thought it was a at the time a lot of academy players was coming through to the first team. You had Jack, Jack Rodwell, Jose Baxter, um, Victor Nietzscheby. You had a few, a few, a few players more than a few, should I say, that was coming up from the from the youth level. So I thought about it hard. And yeah, me and my, me and my pops chose chose Everton. Um, obviously, learnt my trade at Everton, uh, and then yeah, eventually got released by Everton. But yeah, I think I learnt a lot, coached a lot, and those things that I learnt, it can never be taken away from me. You know, um, I would say I learnt more mentally than probably. Technically, at Everton, you know, I think they're very, they they drilled a lot of things into me that I think will will oh has helped me uh, in life, you know. So I'm definitely grateful. I don't hold no regrets or anything like that. I'm very grateful with with the experience and and what I've learned there. Yeah, man. Um, just a few things that I took from that. Um, you're 27, right? Mm -hmm. So that age, Man United. I don't know if you were playing with at the time, but that sounds like like the golden area or something, you know, for um, you know Man United Youth Academy. Probably since I think they said it was the best since like Skulls and Neville and them guys. So what, what guys were you playing with? Um, so Larnell. Lano Cole, um, Jesse Lingard, obviously Ravel Morrison, Ryan Tunnicliffe, Sam Johnston, William Keane, Michael Keane. Uh, who else was there at the time? Um, Ezekiel Fires. Uh, Paul Pogba wasn't there. So Paul Pogba came when I was there. Paul Pogba wasn't there at the time. He came maybe a year after me. So I think when we started as a first year scholar, he came. So he wasn't there at the time. We used to play against each other. All the, we used to play against each other, um, but I didn't play with him. Yeah, yeah. Um, crazy. So talk, you know, through the process of being a young kid. Obviously, the way you're describing it was everything was kind of normal to you back then, you know. Um, but probably looking back at it now, it's like, right, like, you know, that, you know, people, clubs, scouts, they're all on me. I don't know what the situation was at South End. Did they want to keep you? Obviously they did, but I mean, at what expense did they want to keep you? Yeah, I mean, South End, they, they wanted to keep me, but you, you're dealing with competition with, with Everton. And, you know, you'll be a bit different now almost to 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 join one of those bigger clubs because like i said coaching wise like i was coached i was coached that like, really really well um the facilities etc it would be hard to like match that with like south end because they're not as they, they don't really have money like the bigger clubs so um yeah it was a no-brainer to leave and, and go to to everton um one thing I would say about South End though is they they do have an eye for talent, you know, because a lot of um a lot of players, a lot of good players that come from South End. I'm on about the likes of Michael Nagu, um Dominic Ayofa, uh, uh Jack Payne, yeah, Isaac Isaac Hayden, all of these players are, you know what I mean, came from South End, so Steffi Mahmoudidi. Um, yeah, there you go. Steffi, Keith, my brother Keith. That yeah. literally have a lot, a lot of talent. So, um, yeah, 
it's just about obviously the next step because I believe there's only so much you can you can progress at a club like Southend and that's no disrespect to them but you just need to go to that, that next level and be coached by the best of the best so um, yeah uh, Everton like I said I believe that was the right move um, and yeah how do you how do you make a decision as a young boy in that situation? Do you kind of lean to your parents for advice in that situation, or is it really ultimately up to you as a young boy, still, you know, having to deal with a situation like that as you know, really as a man? You know, that's a, a man decision, really. Mm, a bit of both. I definitely think um, obviously my parents have a lot of. My, well, my dad at the time, my dad, he's more, he has more football knowledge than my mum. She wouldn't even know what to do. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think definitely my, my dad had a massive input in it. Um, and we were so close to going the other way. But uh, yeah, we chose Everton. I'm a, I'm a Man United supporter as well. So I'm basically rejecting my, my own club that I support. What was it like moving away from home for the first time? It was tricky, <clears throat> proper tricky. Getting used to their mentality, like, like the Scousers' mentality. Oh, I got myself into like, little fights like, with my teammates, little ones. Not like physical fights, but just like the verbal ones. Um, because their mentality is different, their banter is different. You know, I'm coming from London where we don't take some, some stuff that they used to do. You know, so in the beginning, in the beginning, right at the beginning, I definitely thought it was um a bit tricky adapting to their mentality, their banter. But um, yeah, no, I love I love them. I love my teammates. I love them. I really grew up with them. You know, and I wouldn't change. I wouldn't change that. I wouldn't change the way we <laughs> we were together for, for nothing. Yeah, yeah, I hear that. Um... You went on loan a few times, so, you know, obviously you had a taste at South End, playing with the men. Uh, how was that, going on loan and kind of, you know, seeing a different world of football? Yeah, I think um, that helped me as well mentally. I think it helped me more mentally, like, gaining that experience going out on loan, especially the manager that we had at the time at Notts County. Um, he was a bit of a a hard nail in terms of he wasn't your typical manager it wasn't your typical manager um it was just different and i think that kind of woke me up i'm like okay so in the leagues not all managers are the same because i used to think managers have to follow the rules and you know be a certain way and look a certain way and sound a certain way now i would say he wasn't politically correct in a lot of the things he would say and he would do but um like i said it definitely shaped me up and made it made me realize that yeah you know what um there's some managers out there that don't really care where you come from or you know don't really care about your cv and etc like you gotta perform week in week out so yeah that was definitely a learning curve for me going out alone yeah going to somewhere like Knox county um you know, prestigious history and everything like that. Even the fans, the fan base is insane. Mm. Um, don't know what league they were in at the time, but uh, either way. League one. So, yeah, I can imagine they're probably bringing out decent crowds and everything. How was, how was that whole experience? Yeah, good, very good. Enjoyed it, man, literally. Their stadium, their stadium is like equivalent to, to be fair, their stadium can get away of being in the prem, you know. It's that big and it's and it's like a Bournemouth. It's just like a Bournemouth, like a Bournemouth. I'll say better than Bournemouth, though. I will say better than Bournemouth. Yeah, for those that that know about North County and their stadium, they they will know it's, it's it's a stadium that it shouldn't be where it shouldn't be where it is. If you know what I mean, they should be playing that like North County playing in a league um, that 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 lives up to their stadium. Yeah, um, you know, footballers nowadays, 
they have a bad performance or not a good game, or vice versa, they have a good game. They're reading their comments and everything like that. When you made your debut, how was that? The time? Was there even Twitter back then? Um, <laughs> yeah, it was, more, it was more forums, I remember. Um, I remember the forums like, when I was in school. I was still in school at the time when, they, when I uh, made my debut. Wow. Uh, um, yeah, year 11. So it was just different. It was just different. The times now, you had, it was more, it was even Blackberries. Well, Blackberries started coming up, but it was more of um, Sonny Ericsson. So we wasn't really accessing to the, we didn't have that much access to the internet like that through our phones. Obviously, through laptops or computers, we did, but not through our phones. But um, now I've got a lot of um, exposure. A lot of people, when I finish school, that like, when I would finish school while going to school, a lot of people would come up to me. I remember one time I, I, we finished school, I was with my mate, and a man came up to me and he was like, um, excuse me, is there, a, is there a guy in your school that uh, made his debut? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then my mate said, oh, that's, that's like putting at me, that's him. And then he, did, like, he didn't believe my mate. I said, yeah, no, it isn't me. He's like, oh, really? And he shook my hand and he gave me a lot of words of, of encouragement. But that's what I'm trying to say. It, it, um, a lot of people were talking about it. it was on the papers, you know. And um, yeah, no, I'm proud, of, I'm proud of it. Honestly, I'm proud of that, that moment. I, like I said earlier in this, in this interview, um, I'm still, the, I'm, I, I still hold that record. I still hold that record of being the youngest player to play for South Bend. Um, so we'll see if it gets beaten. Obviously, records are always there to get beaten, but I'm 27 now. That was, what, 12, 11, 12 years ago. So it is a long, long, long time ago. A long time ago. Yeah, well, amazing, man. Um, something that not many people get to say, the youngest player ever. I think I've had another someone else on this channel, uh, they were the youngest player ever. So uh, I kind of got a feel of what, what is that actually like, you know, but quite similar stories where you're both in school. So they were dealing with that, that must be crazy. You know, you're, you're, yeah. you're, you're playing with men and then you're going to school and like everything's different. The dynamics are different. The band is different. Everything's different. Like, that, that must have been the, a weird one you know, to process. Yeah, I think, um, I think it was definitely weird, but at the same time, you don't think about some, these things. You're just like in the moment. So I was just living in the it, moment, yeah. just living it and soaking it in, enjoying, like I'll come back to school and play my mates and, do you know what I mean? Like we'll banter and we just enjoy ourselves. And those were the best times because you're not thinking about money, you're not thinking about anything, you're just thinking about enjoying football and enjoying the moment so yeah definitely um now if we play for free i think if football was obviously it would never happen but if we could like literally change rules and play for free not many people will play not many people will play but um if I was, it was back then for me oh man you love it you love it i loved it but as soon as money gets involved that's when things start changing yeah, uh, they say I'm money sure. is the root of evil. So, yeah, when when yeah when the money gets involved, it's, it's, it always gets like that. Things change. I was gonna say, um, I, I don't. I'm trying to think back. If England came calling, and if they did it, then that's a that's a catastrophe. Yeah, it was mad. I, I'll be in the um, the shortlist, so they'll pick their team, the the squad for whatever tournament. And I will be on the on the on the the shortlist backup players, but I never actually had a cap at any academy level for England, which was quite frustrating because, to be fair, I thought I should have. I thought oh, I should definitely, have, but yeah. yeah, I think that was that's more of a thing that I was I was a bit pissed off with at the time, knowing that I didn't get a cap for England. I was really annoyed because there are a lot of players. Well, I thought, um, mm -hmm. You're better. Not, only was I better. Not, not only was I better than, but I was just doing, doing better. Got picked. So, yeah, no, definitely that, that was annoying. That was the annoying part of, 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 I'll say, 
my time at the at my academy level or at the academy level yeah um just touching on you just mentioned money it gets complicated when it's introduced you know as a teenager um in football and whatnot what talk to talk to the people watching what kind of complications would you would you say arise when you know money's introduced whether that be on the field off the field things like that yeah i think that's always money will always there will always be complications you know when you're when you're on a certain amount it brings it brings jealousy um you know and they compare it so i'll give you a great example um i could be on let's say you're my teammate we're playing for the same team so use evan for example i'm your teammate all right and i'm on five thousand a week and you're on three thousand a week all right i dip in the form right? and you're you're playing really 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 well all right and you, and you can obviously see that i'm i'm not playing well you're gonna get frustrated or you're gonna get annoyed because you're on less money than me. Do you know what I mean? And I'm playing shit week in week out. I'm playing shit, and I'm and I'm I'm not I'm not at that level of that man that much money. So um, yeah, you're gonna get pissed off. You're gonna go and knock into the manager saying, "Yeah, I want more money. I'm scoring goals. I'm playing this. Look at Femi. He's not playing well. He's on this amount of money. Why am I on this? Do you know what I mean? So it brings that. It brings already. It brings that negative vibe. It, it brings jealousy, a lot of hate. Um, so yeah, that's what it is, literally. And not even that, but managers as well and coaches. Like what I said, if I'm not performing and, I, and I'm on a lot of money, it brings a lot of pressure. It brings a lot of pressure. Um, managers start treating you differently or start looking at you differently is it because he's on this much amount of money why he's not performing and he's he's now lost it or he's not hungry anymore it just brings so much thought and so much negative energy so yeah i definitely believe money just complicates things um if you're playing for free people won't be thinking that that people won't be thinking like that so yeah that's my input on 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 how much money can make things what, what, what about the what about distractions? Do you feel like distractions when you're not playing well? Yeah. So obviously, when people sign their pros at, at at clubs, I think yeah, youth, youth, a lot of black black folks as well. I definitely pinpoint the black folks. We like to buy the flashiest things, buy the nicest cars, and and um you know, jewellery and just going out, splashing money on drinks and all of that. Um, not too sure how it is now in the academy, but I know definitely back then in my times, a lot of the, like my, the same colours as us, I think we were definitely doing a bit too much um, and wasn't being too sensible with our money. So I think, yeah, distraction-wise, that definitely caused a lot of distraction. Yeah, yeah, I hear that. Um... I would, I would agree and disagree. Like if it's just if it's just our people, I think our I think it's to, more to do where you come from in terms of your 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 I wouldn't say culture because culture is more of a culture can actually be where you're from, where you're born, you know, not actually where your parents are from. So mm -hmm. culture in that way does tend to bring different types of pressures on you and maybe different people around you with different mindsets and things like that, right? But um, no, I, I saw, my time I saw, you know, white guys doing the same thing, so, um, but. Andrew, I believe, I believe so, I believe a lot of, like, yes, white guys, also, white guys, white folks was, or white players, they were doing similar things, but I just saw a difference, I saw, <sighs> And I don't like it. I don't like pinpointing um, it, but I could just see it, and and it was annoying to see it. It was annoying, but like you said, there was white folks that were doing similar things. But I just think we were just going over the top, especially with what I saw. Anyways, with what I saw, I think we were going over the top and being boastful about it. And 
Now, just giving back, if I was to give back, you know, to the community or go into one of these academies or speak to just people that are academies, you know, I would, I would, I would talk them through um, certain things on this. It's because it's all management, isn't it? It's all, it's all management. So I would, I would talk them through these things. And it's like our culture, say the culture, you mentioned the word culture. There are certain things that we see every single day or that we listen to that influences those things and the reason why we buy those things. Do you know what I mean? So um, it's not just it's not just footballers or young footballers. It's also uh, musicians, like your music artists, um, even that like, people that don't even do sport and are just living in on the, or living around the area. They go up to one and buy these things. You know, and it's a pattern, it's a repetitive pattern that I see now that I'm a bit of an older head. I can see it from a different perspective. When I was younger, I still saw it, but it's a different perspective to how I see it now. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, I honest, honestly believe um, what I'm saying is the truth. But like I said, it's all about progression, it's all about hoping each other and helping the younger younger generation in making the right decisions like you said you said um you know you would actually go in and educate the younger the younger players today and give them guidance on what path to choose but don't you think when you're young and you've got that hard head and you're just thinking there's nothing no one can tell me because like, I'm doing my thing. This is the way my life is going to go. I'm on this amount of money. Like, how do you get into that person's head and change their way of thinking right. and be like, listen, I was in your position. And, you know, not to say that you made the wrong decisions or whatever, but I'm saying, like, I was in your position. I know how you're feeling. How do you get into that person's head? What do you have to say to them? Yeah, you're right. It's tough. It's, very, it's really, really tough. But, you know... I think, so I remember obviously we were all young. I remember people would say, yeah, I played here before and I admit I was your age and I made a mistake. But I would think, I will look at them and be like, mm, do you know what I mean? I wouldn't really take them serious. So I just, it just comes down to, like you said earlier in this, in this um, conversation as well, it comes down to their upbringing. If they really want to listen, if they really want to go far, I think the wise listen, the wise, they will listen and they will take things on board. I think the ones that are more ignorant or arrogant and, you know, harder headed, those are the ones that tend to like fall, unless you just have some type of good luck and you make it somewhere, but it will always catch up. The bad attitudes um, and all of that will always catch up. You look at it, Ben Arthur, Mario Balotelli, that all the all the all these guys that are that are so or that have so much ability and that could have progressed so much and become a great, they all fell because of their attitude, you know. Um, so it just comes down to the individual bonus of you. I can say so much, but it's up to you if you wanna take it in. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, understood. Guys, don't forget. Make sure you subscribe. Click that button down below. Don't be shy. Subscribe. It helps our channel. And uh, yeah, you know, we get to see more videos like this one. Back to the video. Um, so let's take Everton out of it. Um, you know, when you're on a high like you were, going through every age group, you exploded from grassroots, come out of that, signed play a couple of years, sign somewhere else, then you're playing at Everton, doing your thing. What, what's it like when then you kind of have that come down from all those highs and then it's like, rah, this is the world that people were telling me about before where, you know, now it's, it's really like every man for themselves kind of thing. Yeah, that's, that's, I remember it like it was yesterday, the, the, the moment I got released in the office. Um, I just wanted the world to just literally suck me, suck me up. 
I remember it like there was you had David Moyes and you had my the reserve team manager at the time, uh, Alan Stubbs, and um, it was yeah, David Moyes true. that was talking. To me. Yeah, it was David Moyes that was talking to me at the time, and he gave me the obviously he gave me the 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 sack if you want to call it, but he said it obviously in a in a way where I could understand. Um, but yeah, like I said, I just, I just, I was definitely depressed. I was, um, I was just like speechless, speechless. I couldn't hide my emotions. Um, I wasn't crying, but I just couldn't hide my emotions. People could see that I was, I was, I wasn't happy. I was pissed. But um, yeah, I remember. I remember it. I just wanted to be sucked up, really. Didn't know what to do at the time. Um, obviously, I knew I had to do the trialing game and 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 all of that, which I wasn't really. I've never been a fan of trials, and I, I hadn't had a trial um, prior to, for like many, many, Four, many five years. years. Or even like, yeah. yeah, even the whole idea of, of trials was a bit like creepy. Um, but yeah, nevertheless. I, I, I I brought myself together and um got back at it and ended up going going abroad, played abroad. Yeah, yeah. Um how was that experience going abroad again, further away from home? Obviously you're kinda of used to it now, so um I did that at that point. So how was that? Um going abroad was probably for me, I'm just saying I know you bro. For me, I think it was a mistake. Um, I think I should have stayed here. I remember the agent that I was working for at the time, um, he had an offer for me um, in England, and I turned it down because I, I, I just liked the whole idea of going abroad. Um, so I turned it down and then went abroad. It didn't work out. Um, so I came back, but... Yeah, I think that was for me the, probably one of the biggest regrets um, in the, in my in my football career going abroad straight after being released. Where what country was this and what what team was it? Uh, Sweden, uh, AFC United, they're called. And uh, what what was the level difference compared to? how it was in England, the culture and everything that that was, what was different? Um, so the culture, I mean, in terms of the culture, I think England is a footballing country. You know what I mean? It's the number one, it's the number one, football's the number one sport. Obviously Sweden, they have the other, maybe number one sports in, in that country. In that country. Um, a lot of the games are played on AstroTurf, um, the buzz around like the camp wasn't the same. Uh, just, just, just some a lot of like small things that end up adding up to like massive things. Um, that's the reason why I, I really didn't enjoy it. Um, nevertheless, I met some good people there. I met some some real good people that I'm I'm still friends to to today. Um, but ultimately, I'll definitely say it. my time there wasn't really enjoyed as much as I thought it would be. So coming back to the uh, to the UK, uh, what's your first thoughts like? Obviously, you you want to get back on the ladder, get back playing. Mm. Uh, was that hard for you to come back? Um, what from Sweden to come back here? Yeah, in terms of everything, you have to kind of press the reset button again. Um, yeah, you know. It, you know what it was because at the time I'm young, I'm not working. You know, football's all I know, so it's literally like I wake up and I'm and I'm looking. Um, you know, you're not patient. You're not. Um, you just want it to. You want something to to come quick. You know, you want something to come quick, like you're all messaging your agent. <laughs> you found your club yet? You found your club yet? What's the latest with this? What's the latest with that? You're constantly. You know, thinking, but at the same time, you gotta, you know, practice and make sure you're fit enough to, to train once the opportunity comes. 
Um, but yeah, no, I settled for when I came back. I settled for a team in the conference, um, and I and I really started enjoying it. Really started enjoying it again. Um, that team uh, were based in the Midlands, so it was quite a trek. But they would pay for my trouble, they would actually pay for my accommodation. It was almost like a like a professional team the way they like ran things. You know, so I really started enjoying it, and the fan base was quite good as well. After that, um, I, after that, I went back. I went back away. I went back abroad to Norway, um, similar to Sweden, similar to Sweden. Um, came back to the UK, and then um, I think I joined the team. Then went back. I went to Australia this time, um, and that was the that was the final straw. I couldn't do it anymore. I just fell out of love with the game, um, and yeah, came back and started playing grassroots football and started enjoying it. Started enjoying it, and that's where I'm at now. Grassroots, literally just yeah. enjoying the game, playing with my friends, playing against a lot of my friends, playing with family. You know, it's something that I actually enjoy doing now. Why is that? What, what for the people who don't understand who's watching, they may be like, "What playing football for a career and everything like that?" Like, why would you? What is it that makes you fall out of love with the game? Um, out of love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like we said, like I said, in a way, um, it all comes down to money. I believe. I believe it comes down a lot to money. So. A lot of times when I was going abroad, I'm vulnerable. So when you're abroad, you're vulnerable automatically. You're 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 not really used to their system. So a lot of teams weren't paying the correct money, or they will they will shortchange you, or they'll tell you that they will pay you one this amount, and you're getting paid that amount, or the delay in 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 the salary. It's just for me, money. You get emotional attached. You know, because the reason that a lot of the times we play for money and a lot of the times as a footballer, you, you, you are playing for money, but you're playing at the same time for the love of the game as well. Um, especially at an age like, like myself and yourself, of course. So you can't just be working, giving it, giving it your all, and then for them to come and tell you that oh, we've, we've, we've had to cut your money in half because we're going through a bit of difficulties. There's nothing worse than, than hearing that. Do you know what I mean? Or the chairman is, is um, I don't know, is trying to solve some, I don't know, whatever ex- excuses. <laughs> always excuses, yeah, and yeah, yeah. And there's, always, there's always an excuse as well. Always. Mm. And like I said, I, I just got tired of it. I got tired of it. I'm not, I'm not with my family. I'm in a in a uh, in a country where, you know, I don't really know anybody. So I thought, nah, I can't do this anymore. I can't do it anymore. So I came back. I came back. So this, this is it. Literally, this is it. And that's why I fell out of love. But like I said, I fell back in love with it, playing grassroots football. And what I'm playing for free. I'm even I'm even paying to play. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm pay, I'm paying subs to play. Why it's free? I'm it's stress. I'm stress free. I'm playing because I actually love the sport. I'm playing with my friends, with my brothers. I'm enjoying it again. And you know what? A lot of a lot of teams. I get a lot of teams asking me to 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 join them, um, like random teams and conference, north and south team. But I said no. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. A lot. A lot. Jordan. A lot. A lot of teams. But I'm not doing it because I know what that comes with. I'd rather be happy and play for free than get paid for, I don't know. Nowadays, they, they'd be fishing up quite a lot of money. But if it doesn't make any sense, if the money makes sense, of course. <laughs> do you know what I mean? But if it's like 200, 300, for me, I'd rather be happy and, and not play and just play with my friends, honestly. But that's just, that's just me in a way. So playing for money... Um, Playing for money for me, 
like sorry, I was saying happiness. All right. When it comes to happiness, it it's almost like a it, it opens doors for a lot of things. When you feel happy within, it opens doors for a lot of things. When let's say you're playing for you're playing for money, um, and you're sad, you're you're upset, you're emotionally tired with 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 that with that money, but it's making you upset. I'm telling you, it creeps into a lot of things that you're doing, and then you won't be happy in that. I won't be happy in life, and 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 play for free. But obviously, many people will, will disagree with it. But I just believe it makes you a better person. It makes you think of ideas that would make you money, you know. So, yeah, happiness is definitely key in 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 in, in life. Uh, last question to do with football. Explain to everybody your feeling and your feelings on calling it quits in terms of your career and feeling like what 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 emotion do you have when you when you let go in terms of is this like like a breath of fresh air type of thing or is it like ah oh, I wish it I wish you know. I wish this could have happened. I wish that could have happened. Like what? What? Because I've spoken to you. You're the you're the second. No, you're the third guest I've had on uh, for career after football. I had Marvin Sordell and had um, someone called Alfie Kane. Both different perspectives. So right now it's like one this side, one that side. Uh, Alfie, he was younger when he quit. Um, or I wouldn't say quit. Quit's not the right word. Just decided to choose a different way of life um, for his career and he, you know he, he feels like he could have you know I wish blah 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 Marvin you know had a great career you know did what he needed to do he doesn't feel any regret type of thing he doesn't feel any like attachment still to football what, what do you feel? Uh I'm a bit of both, but I'll sway more to um, feeling some type of way because of the simple fact that I've not accomplished what I've always dreamed of of accomplishing, of of doing, um, and that was obviously to play play in the prem um, and have my name spoken about, you know, nationwide. So. I see, I see a lot of players that I played with, played against that I know that are playing at either a good level or playing in the Prem, playing in Champions Leagues, you know, that I I grew up with, that I'm still friends with to till today, and it kind of like I won't say upsets me, but I just feel some type of way about it, you know. I'm happy, I'm happy for them, but. For myself, I just feel some type of way. Like, could I have? What could have changed? Did I make the right decisions? You start asking yourself questions. So, yeah, I'm definitely not happy at the fact that I've not accomplished what I what I what I've always dreamed of accomplishing as a as a child, as a as a kid. Um, but I have accomplished something major, and that's obviously being the youngest player to play for for South, and that's something that would always be with me and I can always tell my nephews, my my children, my grandchildren, you know what I mean? So yeah, that's I think that's my take on on, on that. Yeah, um, you know, doing this kind of stuff, I hear very uh thing similar things that, you know, I relate to, I've seen before and everything like that. Um what you just said there, but you have actually something that you did accomplish, you know. So you don't actually feel like necessarily, ah, oh, you know, I could have. Obviously, everyone does, you know. Even probably the best uh, players do. Probably even Ronaldo might feel like that at the end of his career if he doesn't win a World Cup, you know. Yeah, like that's it. That's that's just the way uh, life is. You're always trying to go to the next step, achieve more and more. And if you're driven like that, you'll never <coughs> stop, right? But um, I feel like you um, are on the journey of. You know, you've done this football thing and, you know, it's shown you um, a different way of life and 
it's probably made you very much so the person you are today and that's going to lead you into your into your next career path yeah 100 percent. one thing you you're one thing you actually don't have to worry about is you don't have to worry about what you're going to do after football you've already you made that decision you know what you're doing you know uh explain to players watching potentially how do they make the transition after football and you know pick a career path that will make them happy and give them that type of buzz that football gave them yeah you said that just make 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 it make sense in happiness i think music to me has always has always made me happy like music is such a a major aspect in people's life you know music can make you happy sad or, or, or whatnot but i've always enjoyed music i've always enjoyed listening to music so i know or i, or I didn't know at the time but that like, djing for me will make me happy and that's something that i'm doing now and getting paid for it do you know what i mean so there's many even that like, fashion that like, clothes um I've got my own clothing line, um, and that's something that makes me happy. I like I like clothes. I like wearing different types of clothes, um, and that's something that I've developed from when I was young. I was like looking neat, clean, you know. And now I've um, taken that interest and made made it into a hobby, something that I can do and and, and make money from it. So. I definitely believe that after whatever you're doing, football, football, talking about football, after football, think about what other things you're good at and make it into a, 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 a business. Make it into a business for yourself. You know, I think that's very, very important. Yeah. Um, just speaking on DJing, because someone might watch this and be like, I like music, I like DJing. Uh, like you said earlier, you had to practice and what not be good at it. But how do you actually get into that? Like, how do you? How does somebody trust you? Because that's a that's a big thing. Someone's yeah. gotta trust you to make yeah. the whole event live. So uh, talk to me about that. Well, um, like with everything, in it, even football, you gotta be trusted. Let's say you didn't know. Let's say you win a. Uh, you're in a new environment, right? You don't know nobody, and, and you're, you want to play with a bunch of, of players, ten of them, all right? And they're doing um, the picking the teams. They don't know you, okay? But they will pick you based on maybe your physical appearance, but they're trusting you. Got to prove to them that you're 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 good enough in it. And eventually you will prove to them because everybody knows what kind of, or you know deep down what, what level you played at and et cetera, et cetera. So it's like music or it's like DJing. When I, when I first started, I had to prove to people, I, I would almost beg people to play in their, in their party. I'd like, beg people, listen to me, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. But I know once I get an opportunity, it's, it's, it's a wrap, you know what I mean? I, I know that because I know what I can do with, with, with the decks. Um, and obviously now I've got one extra um, capital extra on my on my CV um, that I played at. I've got represent that I played at. I've got Boy FM radio. These are radio stations by the way that I played at. I've got a lot of clubs, <laughs> a lot of clubs, a lot of promote prom promoters um, that I played for. So that my name has, has is, is around now. So when my phone rings. I can demand what I want to demand because I know, you know, where I play. Like, I know, what, yeah, and and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So yeah, it's all about in the beginning. It's all about obviously getting yourself out there, um, socializing, trying to build some connection. Um, because they will give you an opportunity. Your opportunities will always come. People that that say doors don't open, opportunities don't come. Don't listen to them. An opportunity will always come. You just have to prepare yourself for when it comes and then when it does come um make sure that you don't disappoint yeah um two things on that I, I feel like i never had to do this at a certain point in my career 
when I was playing because everything was kind of plain sailing for me, you know, when I was at the academies and everything was going good and everything like that. But, you know, when it's not going good, then that's how you, you kind of test your character. Like, if you really want it, then you get you got to go out there and kind of create your own opportunities and maybe ask, ask certain people, ask certain people for opportunities and, you know, you, it kind of hits your ego a little bit. So you asking people for, you know, opportunities yeah. and to play, was that kind of a different side to you or did you already kind of went through that with football already? Um, is this for music? Yeah, yeah, for DJing, yeah. So the DJing was different because people still label me as a footballer. So when, when I'm coming to them with, oh, yeah, I can DJ, and this is, you have to remember, I'm, I'm coming with my phone. I'm not coming with my deck. So they're thinking, huh? Now when I'm asking them to DJ for my phone, like, for your phone. Now people don't DJ free phones, they DJ free decks and speakers and all that. But anyways, um they didn't understand because obviously I had the app on my phone and I could use it that incredibly good. Um so yeah, now to your question, the question was <laughs> I'm going yeah, my, 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 my question was basically like you know, you having to go to people. Oh, you having to go to them. Yeah. So, yeah, me going to them was almost like I had to. I had to. For me, I had to because it's, they don't know me for, 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 they didn't know me for being a DJ. No one knew me for, and I wasn't even labeled as a DJ at the time. I was just like, Femi, the footballer. Now, what are you doing DJing? So, I remember that when I was really getting, um, a lot of exposure with the DJ and people posting me and all of that. I get messages and phone calls. Let me DJ now. <laughs> you DJ for real? Like, yeah, DJ. But like I said, I don't want to. I don't want to be labelled a DJ. I, I I do so many other things than than just DJ. You know. So obviously it brings in a a, a, a study or a nice income, but at the same time, you know, I've got a clothing line. Mm-hmm. And I've got the businesses that I do, so DJing is just for me. It's a, it's it's a hobby. Um, I can always fall back to DJing at any given time. Like right now, for example, it's not done. Events are not happening. So what I'm gonna do now, sort of thing. I've got other things that I'm I'm doing. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely wouldn't want to be labelled as a DJ. But it's just something. It's one. It's 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 a character. As you say, it's a character in me. I've got a lot yeah. of characters, and DJ is one of them. Uh, last question. Like you said, through this lockdown period, obviously, it's it's not. You would say in your time, your time plan, or your time, you know, when you chose to pick up DJ for real, you know, like proper for real, like leave football like to the side and proper focus on DJ. Like, what was your reaction then? You know, cause you're thinking this is my, this is my new kind of, you know, my new career path and everything I did. This is what I want to do. And now you know for a fact that it's come to a halt because, you know, of the pandemic. Mm. Um, so with regards to that question, I. Like, I've never really said I want to focus fully on, on DJing. I've never really said that. Um, I've always been, like, right now, I don't know if you can see, well, you can't see, but my, I'm, I'm standing next to my, my desk with, that, with my whole DJ set. It's always been there. I always, like, when, I'm, when I come back home from wherever I've, I've gone, I'll come on my, um, my decks and I'll, I'll DJ. Um, learn new things but it's not been something that I'll say cool this is I'm going to devote all my time my focus on on DJ no I did believe or I do believe that I will make it on radio like before all of this I knew that I was going to make it on radio I knew I was going to be, be playing for rock boys I knew I was going to be playing for different other other clubs that I play for I knew I, 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 I've seen it I've seen it already I know I'm going to be playing in, in festivals when this whole lockdown ends. I, I, I know that. But, like I said, I don't, I don't devote all my time on DJing. I know that 
I've got other things that I want to accomplish as well. Just like football, sorry, just like football, I've accomplished something in football. I've become the youngest player to play for something. That's something that can never be taken away from me. I want to accomplish something with my DJing. I want to accomplish something with my uh, with my clothing, my clothing line. These are things that you know I want to accomplish. As there's so many things, not just one thing. And I think what kind of like shaped me up to think like this was the fact that I was so disappointed and heartbroken when I got released from Everton. I said to myself, I can never get, I can never let um, myself be focused with one thing just for some man to tell me that I'm on the bench or to release me, do you know what I mean? Mm. So I said, nah, now I'm going to make sure that I'm good at, I master so many things, I master that, I master this, I master, do you know what I mean? That, yeah. and yeah, that's, that's, that's why I've got the mentality that I have right now. I uh, appreciate you coming on, bro. Uh, that was very insightful for not just me, for the people watching. Uh, give one, well, two questions. Who would you bring on? If you, out of all the people you know, who would you bring on to come on here? Who would you think would actually have a good conversation? Uh, I would say um, Hope Akpan. Mm. There's a lot of knowledge. Of him. He's playing. He's still playing um, professionally now. Um, he's an ex, obviously an ex Nigerian international, um, and he's still playing. So yeah, now he will have a lot of um, information with regards to international playing in in the in in the Premier League, playing for Everton at such a young age, um, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, yeah. And the second question of the conversation we had, if you can reconnect your thoughts and whatnot, one bit of advice that you could give somebody who's transitioning into, you know, the second uh, part of their, their career, because, you know, they started off probably most likely being a footballer. Um, that was probably their first job. And then, you know, for a lot of people, it's a shock and, you know, they don't know how to transition into the next part. What 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 bit of advi advice would you give them? Transitioning, I'll say, um, don't be afraid to to let people know that you're not playing football anymore professionally and, and you're and you and you've moved on to a, a different path. I honestly believe that like, with myself, I was afraid to to let people know that I, I don't play I don't play football. I was afraid. So yeah, I'll definitely say don't be afraid, literally um find what you want to do all right and and go with it promote it let people know that you're not playing football that chapter is done you're, you're now onto a different chapter of your life and let people know what you do so they can book you for whatever it is that you're doing um and another advice i'll give is don't put all your eggs in one basket when it comes to it that like make sure that you know there's another thing that you could potentially uh, make money from because when, once that thing that you're putting all your focus ends up going bust what's, what's next so yeah, that's my real advice real talk man real talk 4258 I was your host Jordan Antonio Brown and today we had with us Femi aka DJ Femstar thanks for coming on bro appreciate it love bro appreciate it man and big up yourself as well you know you always be my my younger brother, I've always actually looked up to you. I don't like. I don't know if Keith told you, but I used to always ask him how you were and how you've been when you're playing for Arsenal at the time. Um, yeah, so yeah, now you're definitely someone that I, I I really liked as a as a as a kid. So yeah, keep doing your thing, bro. Um, and and yeah, the sky is your limit. And, and I, appreciate, I appreciate that, bro. I appreciate that. 4258. Don't forget to subscribe, press the link, and all the links down below for Femi's uh, socials and everything will be down below. Peace. For more content like this, like, share, and subscribe. Mm -hmm.